Okay, so hi everyone. Um, this is the last presentation, so I hope you'll stay with us just the last 10 minutes. So, who starts? Uh, I'm Vera, and we're from the Graduate School of Management of Kyoto University. So our topic for today is to uh, increase inbound tourism uh, in Japan. Is it like actually application of social entrepreneurship in Japan? So we actually is doing a social enterprise startup. So our company name is Maishitai. We just started um, this year, April. So we're still in the pre-launch stage. Huh? Sorry, okay, I don't understand. 2016, there were about 20 million visits from overseas to Japan. Okay. From, from the graph, and the next one. Uh, we can see that even tourism has, has been growing in Japan in the next. However, when we, see, when we compare this to world inbound tourism, this growth and number is still not in par with the number one country, for example, France, had 84.5 million visits in 2015. However, the Japanese government has identified the tourism industry as a key factor in solving Japan's future problems, which we will di uh, discuss later on. Um, we got the uh, inbound tourism to increase Japan exports, exports and economy. Inbound tourism exports aim to increase revenue from 8 trillion yen, 2020 to 15 trillion in 2012. In 2012, the tourism had a total contribution of 5%, which is the same as the contribution of the construction industry. So, when everyone uh, hears about Japan, your image is about Toyota, Nissan, all these construction companies. But you can see that in 2012, tourism's contribution is almost the same as the construction industry. So the tourism industry, is there's a high potential in Japan. So in both tourism's uh, outlook in Japan, Japan is very competitive. It actually ranks fourth now in 2017 according to the World Economic Forum Travel and Tourism Competitive Index ranking. However, when we compare this to the World Inbound Tourism Ranking with regards to the number of tourist arrivals, there is a big gap between the competitive index and the rank in Japan's rank. For example, France here is ranked second, and here France is ranked first. So there's no gap. But when you look at Japan, there's a big gap. So why is that? Well, the major problem in Japan today is the aging and the shrinking population. From 2010 to 2050, population is expected to decrease from 127 million to 9 million. This results in high labor shortage. Um, a small city will lose about 48% of the current population, and 90% of the city will become closed down. Actually, there will be no people. 44% no of the city will have 50% population decrease. Only 2% of the cities will see increasing population. Aside from that, due to the big decrease in population, many rural communities in Japan are on the verge of bankruptcy. It is estimated that more than 20% or 300 towns are in high debt and one city already bankrupted in 2007. Yeah, the one city is uh, Yubari City, is located in Hokkaido, most, most is part of Japan, um, when bankrupt in 2007. It has a population of 120,000 in the early 1980s, but fell down to only 9,000 in 2016. So we can see that if nothing is done, more of towns will become like this if we don't do something. However, although um, inbound tourism is generally increasing in Japan, it is concentrated only in the major urban cities like Tokyo, Osaka, Hokkaido, Fukuoka, and Kyoto. So does this mean that there's no hope for the rural communities to benefit from inbound tourism? The answer is actually no. 
A recent survey conducted this month by the Development Bank of Japan found that 93% of the for, uh, tourists, foreign tourists who came to Japan would actually prefer to visit rural areas rather than the major destinations like Tokyo, Osaka, Hokkaido, Fukuoka, and Kyoto. The reason is they did not feel that they could really experience Japan because Tokyo is actually a, it's a major city. You can't really experience Japanese culture if you go there. But when you go to the rural communities, that's where you experience Japan. Okay, so another thing is that we said that inbound tourism in rural communities, uh, given the condition, if promoted well, has a potential. However, Japan has low marketing competency in terms of marketing. This is an example of um, is this, um, at Nara, Nara Station. It's close to Kyoto. Um, we can see that um, there are several languages supported here, so these are flyers. But when I'm a tourist, if I see this, okay, temple, temple, temple. I, I would, what's, what do I do at the temple? I'm not Japanese. I can't read Japanese, although there are information here. It doesn't excite me. I don't know what to do here. But when you compare to a poster provided by Universal Studios Japan, I think this is actually a good marketing model because it excites you. It, oh, you can see. Okay, next. So this is um, also. So, okay, so we can see the huge differences in marketing competency when we compare Japan's strategy to that of France. So these are the pictures in France where actually they all of them include people doing something in the tourist attractions. Now let's look at Japanese official tourist website. Um, you can really see the tourist spots like wow crazy uh, and if you but tourists cannot clearly understand what they are doing and what thing they can do and express when they look at them and the those pictures. So taking all of this into consideration, our social enterprise startup aims to match the foreign tourist needs and the local business needs. For foreign tourists, they don't know where to go and what to experience in Japan. For local businesses, they have difficulty reaching out to foreign markets. Matching these needs brings us to the social entrepreneurship application in the tourism industry. Our business goal is to effectively market rural communities to uh, foreign markets and help local business with the language barrier and uh, low marketing competence. Our business model has three parts, subscription business model, premium business model, and travel agency business. Our goal is to let people ex people know about the culture and products, experience it themselves by pro uh, providing them samples, and providing travel itineraries and deals, and finally making them come to Japan. Uh, this is just a screen capture of our website. You can access it at souvenir.mindfeta.com. And we're also doing social media right now. We're asking some bloggers to review our products and services. We're using Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and Instagram. So, our subscription business model works is that we provide customers with local Japanese products and souvenirs, souvenir merchandise every month. So our goal is for customers to sample the local products to make them interested in visiting the area. It also increases the revenue for the local businesses as their products are exported to the foreign markets. Next is our freemium business model. Here is where we do content marketing. So we will create blog articles, YouTube, self-produced manga to promote rural communities. So this is our manga. We're actually self-producing it. Last is the travel agency business. This is different from normal travel agency. The main difference is, is that we do not provide tour guides and the itinerary is flexible. We only provide travel guides for, and customer support for translation or language barrier problems. 
the key trend to our social enterprise is differentiation. We aim to differentiate ourselves from competitors through creativity and the social impact that we create for the rural communities. We strongly believe that there is high potential for inbound tourism in rural Japan, and we hope that we can achieve it by applying social entrepreneurship. Thank you for listening. We hope you can provide it. So who wants to offer a solution? <laughs> Terrifying question. Yeah. You, you're saying that customers subscribe. Who are the customers? The customers are the business in yeah. Japan or the customers is like you and I? Customers are like you and I. Yeah. Yeah. So why would I pay $24 to subscribe when I do not I'm not interested in Google because I didn't know. So I thought that you was you were asking the local businesses to subscribe because your market would get products. They would benefit. Oh yes, we're getting their products. We're creating it into a subscription box. They should pay. Isn't yes. It? The local business should pay, not, not the consumer. No, no, no. We're, send, we're sending Japanese products to consumers abroad. Yes, but who pays the subscription? Consumer or the local business? Consumers. 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 The subscription business model is yes. actually yes. very. So um, are we, um, my question is, when yes. you consumer be doing chicken and egg problem. Yes. And uh, if you look at the Alibaba malls, Alibaba is free for everyone, consumer. But the business would be charged money for the business to subscribe to it on Alibaba. Yes, but this is for consumers. This is consumer product. This is like mystery boxes where you receive boxes every month. This is actually a big model now in Japan. Oh, 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 yeah. You actually get a box. I see it in the web. Yes. Okay, I think just to add some more to what the can the consumer like view the product before you know subscribing? I will want to see what I'm paying for before I subscribe. You know, anybody can just develop something way cheaper than the what you just did, and then as market, and then your your business is just out of you know your skin is out of business. So isn't there a way to you know entice the customers, you know, to just see a product by itself like a free trial before they can pay for a new subscription for a month or something? Well we actually provide previews for this month's box. So they actually see the preview for uh, what's inside it. But you still get kind of feeling of surprise when you receive the box. Because that's the main business model of the subscription business. And it's only one part of our business. Stage one is subscription business. Stage two is we have premium business model where we have YouTube videos, and manga, travel. We're just doing basic. Uh, just curious. I have, uh, I already in my mind have started thinking of people that I know that I would want to buy this uh, as gifts for, for their birthday. So first, is it already available? Can I go home and, and, and buy one? Yeah. Yeah. And two, it might be interesting if you can offer um, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is like a you know when you send somebody an e-bike or something, could you maybe you know if I have my friend who is obsessed with manga, can I buy him a Japanese tourism box and then it'll arrive at his house or something? Yes, yes. We provide you can buy as a gift. Yeah. Buy it with the address goes to someone else. Okay, great. Yeah. We just started in April, that's why we're still testing. Yeah, that's awesome. Any other comments, questions? No? Yeah? I have to talk to you.
it would all able to create a successful social enterprises. And that's why at the beginning, we need to put a bar a little higher, think a little harder, right? You want to do education, how do I go from one school to next, to next, right? How do I scale? How do I scale the teachers, right? Maybe your, your, your technology can scale relatively easily. Right? You, can, you can call for donation. I think there are tons of computers sitting out there doing nothing, doing no, no use whatever. You can, you can donate all the computers to these schools, not a problem. But how do you create content? How do you create teachers to use that? So how do you scale your teacher? That becomes very difficult. Right? So for that, you have to figure out an innovative solution. That how do I scale teachers? Right? So this, uh, somewhere asking about how do you train other entrepreneurs to take on these technologies and so on. So, so this is a really a huge challenge, but, uh, but we need to continue to be more innovative. Right? And, and the other aspect is really focus on a specific problem. And hopefully the problem it, it is really can, can rally the real support. Social entrepreneurship, we do not able to, typically we, if we can generate enough commercial interest, then it can go the commercial entrepreneurship route. The reason we go social entrepreneurship is, is that the social impact is probably greater than economic impact. So you need to get, you need to pour in other resources to support it. And in that case, these resources want to associate with something that you have a very clear objective. It can show that you can achieve the goal and with certain effort, and then you can scale your business. Right? So that's also very important. You need to really focus on a specific question. So um, I heard a couple of talks about in Africa, really, have huge challenge, right? Unemployment rate is so high. So I comment a little bit that you cannot generate internal, you cannot generate enough internal business. You need to bring external business into the region, create it, in, improve the income, then you can create internal, right? So being if you in, in Uganda, you have something they already in export, can we export more? Can we export at higher pricing, right? If we already have a, a, a service to outside business, can we expand on those things, right? So you understand the local economy. So don't get out of local economy because that's where you start with, right? So these are my observations. So, but I, I, I'm really very, very, very pleased that we have so many young people are so passionate about solving the world's problem. And we, we, if we continue working on this, right? We continue, continue the passion, but also learn the skill, learn the skill set, exchange, learning from each other, I think we will be able to accomplish and solve this problem. The last thing I want to mention is in teaching entrepreneurship, we often talk about that there's not invented here syndrome. Every entrepreneur thinks of the idea that he has the best idea. That, that's why it makes us make us an entrepreneur. Right? People don't recognize that being a good opportunity. That you recognize it. You very you are very persistent about you want to address the problem. So that's a good good feature of being an entrepreneur. On the other hand, Sometimes an entrepreneur also should be a good learner, should be, have open minded. Remember, our job is to create social impact. If you have recognized a better idea, a better team, a better opportunity, there's nothing wrong for you to associate with that idea first and get that thing going while you come up with a better idea next time. So next time your idea will be the idea that people will know. Okay, so, so that's also a requirement to entrepreneur. You, you have to be a good learner and you have to be good, you have to have an open mind. And always come back to fundamentally why you are doing this. Right? You're doing this to create impact, to help address some social issues. So once you thought you think through that, then you will probably be more likely to accept other people's suggestions and maybe team with other people to address a particular problem mm -hmm. that is more, uh, more viable and more, more achievable. Okay, so those are my comments. And, uh, I can, any other students want to comment today? I think at least my presentation is finished. Or any questions for me? Now, Professor, how, how these go? I'll answer all your questions. <laughs> yes, no? Okay. Actually, there is something that I feel like has not actually been addressed so much or that we've not really talked about. And that's with the facts that we have to be kind of patient that sometimes some things take time. And I like keep, okay, I have a result that I want to achieve, but then I just have to understand that I can't do it all at once. I have to just take it step by step, one step at a time. And then I have to be patient because um, it's so easy for me to draw it up in theory 
and say that okay, when I do this and do this, do that, this is the result I want to achieve. And by the time I now practicalize it, I see that that's not actually the case. That some other factors come in. So what I'm just trying to say basically is for you to just enlighten us that the fact that we have to be patient that there are some things that take time that things don't just happen like magic in the world of entrepreneurship that is a kind of process yes that is a process and sometimes this process takes reasonable time i agree so it takes time it takes time to learn so the reason we you know we go to now we have more resources for teaching and educating this is now you'll be more aware you'll be more aware that the entrepreneurial processes especially or, or specifically for social entrepreneurship processes so you still can you still can take your time to learn through this but don't get discouraged because you if you don't have this 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 idea of what it takes to build a successful entrepreneurship or, or social enterprises you might draw a wrong conclusion you might draw a wrong conclusion just because you did not apply a right methodology doesn't mean that you will not be successful next time right so uh, this morning, I think it, he, uh, uh, Professor Howdy Carmen, uh, Amazon CEO, saying, "Fail cheaply and fail quickly." So, uh, in the in the lean startup, in the lean startup, we talk about uh, this uh, minimum viable business product that you test your test your, your your hypothesis, you test as fast as you can, and and then you have to re re address re address or redesign your own hypothesis. Entrepreneurship, building business is no different by building a scientific research. You have a hypothesis, then you test it. If you test it, that your thinking is wrong, then you have to fix it. Right? So this morning, the first thing is about info, information flow. Don't overly trust the experience. Yeah, because we really don't, you don't really don't understand market until you have a product, you have a service in the marketplace, and people use it to give you an honest comment. Right? So that's, that's very important. So I think your comment is right. You, you want to make a comment. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, so we are talking about social entrepreneurship now, uh, but we see that there's a global momentum going on, and we see that more and more commercial enterprises are starting to support the social responsibility. How do we view this? How do you view it? Like how is this something to stimulate, or do we view it as oh, this is just for the wrong incentives? You're doing social entrepreneurship with other incentives. For example, Coca-Cola is, is investing in water consumption and. and uh, a lot of water projects because water is the main ingredient of Coca-Cola. So if they don't do it, over oh, 10 years there is no Coca-Cola anymore. So they have an all other incentive of doing social business, which is not the same as social entrepreneurship, I think, because that's a core value. The core value of social entrepreneur is social impact, and the one of Coca-Cola is their own revenues in the future. So but how should these two relate to each other? And what's like how to approach the tension between, between corporate social responsibility and real social interaction. So I'm not sure I, 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 I understand your question exactly. So corporation also now uh, talk about social responsibility. Uh, but oftentimes corporations don't go address the problem directly. So they might sponsor your project. Right? So that's part of the resources. If you deny your interest goal, then you actually can get corporate support sponsor you. So this morning, we, your project and also the, the uh, what's that the uh, the crowd crowdsourcing technology university. So they also talk about corporate sponsorship. So that that is alignment of the objective. But you have to have to do the work. So they say since we don't have a team, we don't want to get involved in doing the work. We can sponsor you. We can financially support you. So that that basically also a team, right? You form a team. But then you have to present a very good uh, very good business model. Very good venture model so that they will sponsor you. They want to make sure that they, 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 they help you to be successful. Right? So again, the, the knowledge that we, we discussed today is also applied to those situations. Any other comments? I have two questions. First question is very generalized question. Because in social entrepreneurship, why do you generally bear two parts? One is social and the other is entrepreneurship. So, that are the points of uh, when should we make trade-offs between social value aspect and entrepreneurship aspect of the project. And if I ask my questions in a uh, specific manner, specific manner to my own project, so basically we have to make a major trade-off between community engagement and uh, 
scaling of scaling of our project. So it, my project is basically very community engaging project. So if 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 we don't focus on on community engagement, the uh, community engagement, then the social value of the project will be very low. And if if we don't focus on the on the uh, scaling part of our project, then our profit share or our army contract will be very low. So we have to build some trade-offs between the community engagement and the uh, and the, the, the scaling of, of a so, social project. So how should we build trade-offs between mm. these two factors? I don't think there is a there is a quantitative model to say how much should be the social impact and how much should be the social value, how should be the being the entrepreneurial sin. I think for example corporate, you know, they are doing commercial business but they can donate money to the social so those are also supposed to be that. So I don't think that we need to fix a particular balance or ratio. Uh, so as long as so long, but it's a fundamental thing that you have to make it sustainable and, achi and yeah. achievable. If you cannot achieve it, cannot sustain, then in, you know after a couple months, after a year, then this problem, 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 problem project will shut down. So so that is the you make it to be successful. Uh, the the social entrepreneurship really encourages us saying if you can create social impact. You can also raise sufficient resources to achieve the dream. Right? This entrepreneurship is about identifying an opportunity, and then you organize the resources to deliver that opportunity. So that when you identify opportunity, you don't have to be bound by resources. I have half definition says entrepreneurship is to pursue an opportunity with, with, without regard to the resources currently under control. This statement did not say you don't need resources. It says that when you identify a problem, an opportunity, you don't think that you don't automatically be bound by the resources. The resources are out there. You have to identify a good opportunity, a good problem. Then you take this and turn around, organize resources, and come to a, a solve this problem. Now, whether resources are going to associate with your dream, it all depends on whether you pick a good problem. A problem with a good social cause, you have a good team, you have a plan, you have a plan on how to go substitution. Go to scaling and ultimately disrupt the the current uh, 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 market uh, 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 supply chain cycle, right? So if you have all that, then you most likely you will get more people to support you. Most likely you'll be more you'll be successful. you be successful sooner, and you can get more resources to continue on building the next big project. So that's the that's the fundamental. So I don't think we need to really separate how much uh, is social value and how much is entrepreneurial. Thank you. All right. Okay, if you know, uh, I want to thank everyone for your participation and I hope to see you next year, right? Keep, keep your dream and keep working on it. So I'm sure you're going to get better at it and I'm sure you're going to be successful sooner or later. Thank you very much. Thank you.